Holston. <laughs> Mr. Colston is an entrepreneur, <clears throat> business owner, and a member of the New Orleans Saints Hall of Fame. During his 10-year NFL career, he became the Saints' all-time leader in receptions, receiving yards, and total touchdowns. That's good. A seventh-round draft pick from Hofstra University, Mr. Colston defied the odds to become the most productive receiver in team history from 2006 to 2015. He was also a key member of the Saints team that won Super Bowl 44. <laughs> Mr. Colson is the founder and managing partner of Dynasty Innovation, a strategy and execution firm focused on marketing, branding, sports, and professional development. He's also a partner and director of business development at Main Squeeze Juice Company, a New Orleans-based fast casual juice and smoothie bar that has a number of franchise locations spanning from New Orleans to Houston and currently has more than 40 locations in development throughout the country. Additionally, he leads the Center for Innovation at Virtua Health System and also serves on the advisory board for the One Team Collective, a sports technology accelerator run by the National Football League Players Association. In 2018, he collaborated with the Columbia Business School to create an executive education program for current and former athletes. Seeing a lack of structured education programs for athletes, he worked with the business school to develop a program that would give these athletes the tools and knowledge to become successful entrepreneurs and investors. It is now my distinct pleasure to invite Mr. Marcus Colston to deliver the Class of 2019 Commencement Address. Is, uh, it's a little bit different for me. I was um, kind of waiting on some smoke as, as I was coming out of that tunnel back there. <laughs> but um, it, it's, it's an honor to be here. And I, first and foremost, I'd like to thank President Nicklo and all the other esteemed uh, faculty, uh, students, administrators on this stage. Uh, it's, it's truly an honor to be here with you all today. Um, I want to start by congratulating everyone here in attendance. Uh, you, you guys are all part of this journey. Uh, parents, friends, aunts, uncles, teachers. If you're here today, you played a significant role in the lives of today's graduates. I'd also like to congratulate you all, the, the graduating class of 2019. <clears throat> it's, it's truly an honor to be here with you all today. And, especially as you celebrate the end of this chapter and you anxiously await the next. Honestly, the, the opportunity to be here and speak with you all today, it took me a while to come to grips with. I had to do a little bit of soul searching. Um, to be honest, it took me a while to figure out exactly what I wanted to say to you all. What could I say to you? You know, this task of, of you know, kind of being the last person to provide advice before you go out on, into the real world has been intimidating but mostly because I had to look into, into myself and look in the mirror and ask myself questions about the value of my experience. What makes me someone worthy of speaking to you today? And ultimately it led to me, it led me down a path where I thought about the things that, that helped me to be successful. Sure, I was blessed to compete against some of the best athletes in the world on the, on the highest level. And the pressure and intensity that it takes to compete at that level is insane. I've played in the Superdome in front of 80,000 screaming fans of Who That Nation. Played on the biggest stage in, in the Super Bowl, knowing that you know, there's hundreds of millions of people watching on TV at home. But still, when I looked at that, I, I had questions. My stats from the field wouldn't help you. Stories and, and uh, reminiscing about you know, locker room stories and um, you know, reciting all those things wouldn't help you either. 
you know, retelling stories about companies that I've invested in and partnered with, consulted for, they wouldn't help you. I, I knew I had to look a little bit deeper. And I think what makes the pressure at this moment a little bit deeper is, um, you know, it's, it's a little more personal. Uh, because in speaking to you all today, I'm really speaking to myself. That lingering question of what, what wisdom could I leave you with today? What experiences could I share or, or what advice I could leave you? It, it still weighed on me. So as I started to prepare for this speech, I realized that many of you arrived here on campus in two, around 2015 to start your academic journey. At the same time, I was getting ready to embark on my own journey after re choosing to retire from football. So the last four years have led us all here to this arena today. Though we come from different directions, experiences, and perspectives, we're all connected. You all have spent the majority of your lives in school, all leading to this point today. You're all connected with the common vision to leave here as University of New Orleans graduates. Some of you do know what, what you'll do next, others of you don't, and that's okay. Some of you will go on to put your degrees to work. Others of you will find passion in another field, another industry. And that's okay too. The unknown that lies ahead can be a very unsettling feeling. We all go through it. It's part of evolution and growth. You see, I know this process pretty well. Like you, I, I spent 10 years, 14 if you count college, focused on one thing. And I was working to become the best professional football player I could be. I worked my butt off year round. And ultimately, that led to a great 10 year run. Caught a lot of passes, scored a lot of touchdowns, won a lot of games. But what you'll learn that in life, things can change quickly. For me, that change came one February morning in 2006 when I learned that the Saints plan to release me and terminate my contract. There's a little bit of initial hurt there, but um, eventually I realized that I had accomplished all my goals that I'd set for myself. As I looked at it, there was no reason for me to, to go start from scratch in another city with another team. It was time for a new challenge, a new goal. And at that point, I called my agent and I told him I didn't want to talk to any other teams. I was going to retire. And just like that, the ride was over time to do something else. That day I felt very similar feelings to what you all must be feeling today. And undoubtedly you, you'll feel it again in any life transition. Scared, nervous, anxious, excited, yet ready. You may feel like you can't control your thoughts and emotions. And really part of the emotion of today is that you realize that what lies ahead is no longer this abstract thing. What you've been preparing for is now here. Still, it feels like you're standing in front of a door and you don't know what's on the other side. And you feel like you have to deal with that all today. You feel like you got to have your life, your next few years, all of it figured out. But I can promise you that's not the case. As you all try to figure out what's next, I urge you to take your time and enjoy this moment because you've earned it. You've all accomplished something great and laid the foundation for a very successful future. You've also charted paths to success of your very own that can be duplicated throughout the rest of your lives. It wasn't easy for any of you guys to get to this point. You've all had different challenges to overcome. The fact that you're here is proof that you can do it. You know, Mark Twain once said, all you need in life is ignorance and confidence, and then success is sure. You know, this is this something that, that I really believe in, and I call it irrational confidence. And really, it's the key to every bit of success that I've had in my life. You know, over the years, I've studied the work and career path of successful athletes, entrepreneurs, leaders, politicians. And they all seem to have this similar irrational confidence. They all believe that if there's a 1% chance of success, I am that 1%. 
that conviction is rooted in the belief that rationale and logic can't account for everything. Your work ethic, your ability to overcome obstacles, your willingness to persevere are real keys to success. My journey has embodied that belief. You see, there's no way that a skinny kid from Pennsylvania who couldn't, could barely get recruited out of high school should be here today as, as the Saints all-time leading receiver. It was my irrational confidence that led me to have the kind of career that I enjoyed in the NFL. You see, none of those goals that I set for myself were rational or they made logical sense to anyone else but me. So as I prepare for this speech today, I really look back on what has fueled my journey through life, sports, and multiple transitions. This belief system and mindset has allowed me to overcome challenges and obstacles in my life. And as I continue my journey and evolution into what's next, I wanna share with you all three pillars that have and will continue to be the foundation of my irrational confidence. The first pillar is ambition. Set actionable goals that exceed expectations. I remember the first day I stepped on campus at Hofstra University. I came in as a freshman, barely recruited, with one goal in mind. And I was to get drafted into the NFL and play 10 years. I must have thought I was going to LSU or Alabama. <laughs> you know, although it seemed like an unrealistic goal, I was able to work my way into a starting role by the eighth game of my freshman year. I was a 180 pound freshman, wasn't very fast, but I didn't let that deter me. See, I put in the work because I believed in myself and was willing to do anything that it took to accomplish my dream. I spent the next four years on campus year round, even during the breaks, winter break, summer break. And by my senior year, I put on 50 pounds and actually started to look like a, a pro prospect. And in my mind, I was ready for my shot. My mom, though, she, she wasn't buying it. You know, she supported my goal of playing in the NFL, but she always told me I needed a plan B. And as much as I believed in myself and the work that I was putting in, I knew she was right. But at the same time, I knew I had to create my own path. I had to make a decision. How much did I really want this dream that I've been working for? And eventually, I got up the courage to tell my mom that I did have a plan B. And it was that plan A was gonna work. <laughs> now we laughed and joked about that for years after I got my degree, of course. But see, that, that confidence was fueled by my ambition and my willingness to work. And that's when she realized that this wasn't just a dream for me. This was a tangible goal that I was willing to put in anything to, to achieve. And that mentality has stuck with me the rest, the rest of my life and continue, will continue to. By making plan B that plan A has to work, it's, it's something that I keep in my mind and it's something that even as I enter new businesses or I work with entrepreneurs, and, and help them to coach, coach them and effectively run their businesses, it's a mindset that's always at the forefront. So as you go forward to activate this ambition and achieve your big goals, you're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need some people in your corner that hold you accountable even to your own goals at times and pro provide support even when times get tough. You're also gonna need some naysayers that think your goals are irrational and unrealistic because they become your motivation, not just to prove them wrong, but really to prove yourself right. Realize that everything can work for your benefit. You either win or you'll learn. The next pillar of irrational confidence is, is mastery. Learn to become a master of your craft. As a young player here in New Orleans, as a seventh round pick, figure out quickly that you gotta figure out ways to, to do more than what's asked of you, just to get an opportunity to play. You see, we had a pretty complex uh, playbook on offense. This guy, Sean Payton, you might know him. Um, 
he, he came with a playbook, probably hundreds if not thousands of pages. Um, and as a young player, it's like speaking foreign language. But the goal that I set out for myself was to learn all the roles and responsibilities within that playbook. Any position that I could potentially step into, I had to learn it. So eventually I learned that, I learned where every other receiver, every running back was supposed to be and what the roles were on any given play. I also learned my, my opponents. I learned the defenses, the people I was gonna go against, and I learned the structure of defenses and, and where were their weaknesses. And once I understood that big picture, I was able to play by a different set of rules. See, it gave me leeway to create opportunities that weren't even in the playbook at times for myself and for others. And that skill set became invaluable to our offense and helped us evolve as a unit. So I urge you, don't just work to do the job. Make your objective to master your craft. This will allow you to create valuable insights and advantages that others might not even see. And that will make you an irreplaceable asset for any company or team that you work with. The final pillar of irrational competence is consistency. Work daily to create positive habits. See, for our team with the Saints, just like in any other high pressure industry, the hardest thing to do was sustain success. You know, teams can reach the playoffs once every few years, but how do you get there four or five seasons in a row? And ultimately, when you do make it to the top of the mountain, you become the case study. Everyone studies your success, and they learn from your failures to make themselves better. And for our team, especially our Super Bowl year, it became about consistently taking care of the little things. Effort, attention to detail, punctuality. And once we began to consistently hold each other accountable to those small details, we became a much better team. See, when your confidence is rooted in these three pillars, it also allows you to create a, a level of arrogance, or ignorance, I'm sorry, around your limitations. Because you're focused on the road ahead and what's possible, rather than being limited by what's been done before. The harder you work, the more you dig in, the more you stack the odds of success in your favor. In closing, all of you sit here today with your dreams, your goals, and ambitions in front of you. You put in the work to become college graduates. You build the foundation for all the success that you're destined for. There will be adversity along the way. It's gonna test your character, it'll test your resolve, it'll challenge you to your core at times, and expect it because it's coming, but also, understand that on the other side of that adversity is an unwavering confidence, strength, and belief in self that will prepare you for whatever life throws in your direction. Don't be afraid to stake your claim on greatness. Plant your flag with confidence as long as you're willing and ready to go put in the work to make it happen. Embrace your journey in its entirety. Take the lessons from the losses and learn why it is that you win. And that will become your playbook for success. I wanna leave you all today with a quote from an author, Enid Blyton. She says, the best way to treat obstacles is to use them as stepping stones. Laugh at them, tread on them, and let them lead you to something better. Thank you. Mr. Colson, we want to thank you for spending time with us today. Thank you so much for your inspiring address. As a symbol of gratitude, I'd like to present you with this medallion.
And we actually have another part of the ceremony uh, that it also involves you, Marcus. Honorary degrees are academic degrees that honor highly distinguished contributions to a, a specific field or fields. I'm very pleased today to award a Doctorate of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, to Mr. Colson, Colston. It, His exceptional performance on the field, his commitment to his community and to education, as well as his diverse business pursuits, and his willingness to share his hard-earned lessons with the next generation of entrepreneurs warrant the granting of a Doctor of Humane Letters. So with the approval of the University of Louisiana System Board of Supervisors and the authority vested in me, it is my privilege to award you honorary doctorate. Provost. Provost Mahir Amuzagar, assisted by Dean John Williams of the College of Business Administration, will hood Mr. Colston. Ha, ha, ha. 